here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering it procedure skill station, kindly tell me how would you prioritize these three particular patients? Um, the OT part... listing, yes. Uh, for these uh, three patients, yes, I would uh, the first case of strangulated hernia would be given priority. It will come first because it is a life threatening procedure. The second case. Uh, a diverticular abscess would be second because it's contaminated. Then the I would uh, prioritize the the uh, below knee amputation will come third. Uh, even though the patient is diabetic, uh, is a diabetic patient. Uh, since it's uh, it needs amp amputation, I would uh, I, I would I would uh, it would be my third case because it is MRCA positive. Okay, right. Uh, considering. Uh, all right. Can you give me another satisfactory reason why would you place a strangulated inguinal hernia as number one? Uh, the strangulated uh inguinal hernia, it is, is a, it is an emergency operation and it is okay. Life According to which criteria are you classifying it? Uh, according to the uh, to the NCE Nas national confidential uh, na national confidential inquiry. Insufficient yes. outcome and and death, death. Okay. criteria. According to this, uh, all right. If you say that it has been categorized uh, categorized as emergency surgery, so what is the criteria that uh, that this surgery fulfills? Okay. Uh, the criteria is that it it's a uh, it it should be an it should be an emergency surgery that should be done within less than six hours. Then there's also the immediate uh, surgery. We should also always be giving more priority than those th those that are uh, that should be less than six hours, and then those less than twenty four hours. Okay, can you please tell me? Uh, right, can you please tell me if you have to place the diabetic patient on the theater listing? Uh, what are the things that you will consider? Uh, for diabetic patients, ideally, uh, following the, the first principle, diabetic patients, uh, patients with diabetes, most times are uh, always prioritized in the list. Uh, for those patients, we have to do some uh, perioperative glycemic control. Uh, routine overnight fasting is not usually done, and uh, the patient should not be starved for more than one meal. And uh, the the uh, the idea fluid should be a half strength sodium chloride with five percent glucose, and uh, the blood glucose should be about uh, the target blood glucose should be between six to ten millimoles per liter. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, considering the pacemaker patient, what are the what are the advices that you will keep in your mind? before placing this patient as number one? Okay, uh, for the pacemaker patients, uh, I will divide the case, the management of the pacemaker patients into preoperative, intraoperative, and postoperative. Very good. Uh, yeah. for, the, for the preoperative uh, case, I would, the, the patient will be seen, I would uh, recommend that the patient be seen in the, in the pacemaker clinic, whereby uh, the patient is, uh, uh, there will be an information that would depend on uh, any safety advice which should be given to this patient and then to the surgical team as well. 
then okay. uh, what are the precautions number... that the surgical team has to keep in their mind okay the, pre the, pre uh, the precautions include the non-use of uh, monopolar diatomy yes and then uh, there should also be a a, a a cpr a cardiopulmonary resuscitation team yes, that will be around and... and there should also be a temporary pacing Pacing equipment. There's better prior okay. pacing equipment which should also be available as well. And then there should be uh, the patient should have the ECG monitors preoperatively and intraoperatively. Yes, and they should not be uh, used unavoidably. Limited yes. use should be used. Okay. Yes. All uh, right. Uh, since the patient uh, the, that you have placed number one uh, also suffers from COPD. What other precautions uh, would you recommend to keep in your mind? Okay, for uh, the, the COPD patients, uh, I will, the precautions I will keep in my mind include the preoperative uh, precautions and then the postoperative. The preoperative, I would tell the patients to reduce, uh, if the patient is smoking, the patient will stop smoking some weeks mm, before this the- This is lifestyle, uh, yes, and the use of steroid. The, oh. Then the steroids. Then uh, the there should also be a preoperative and a postoperative respiratory exercise, uh, respiratory physiotherapy, such as blowing a balloon. Then I will start the patient on early early ambulation, early and then I, then I will yes. also put the patient on adequate uh, analgesia, and then yes. uh, the uh, the patient should also uh, be sitting upright. Yes. Okay. In the bed. And also, uh, what advice would you give uh, about the use of warfarin? Okay, for the use of warfarin, uh, the patient on the use of warfarin, I would uh, discuss the patient case in the multidisciplinary team and then take an advice uh, from a hematologist. If uh, it's possible, I will tell it, I will tell her uh, for, a, for those that have a low thromboembolic risk, I would. Uh, I will stop the warfarin five days uh, preoperatively and then restart the warfarin as soon as the patient can tolerate orally. For those with a high thromboembolic risk, I will stop the warfarin about four days and then start the patient on subcute low molecular weight heparin. Um, Number two, patient. Yes, your patient yeah. number two is allergic to penicillin and iodine. Uh, how would you take care of that? Uh, since the patient is allergic to penicillin, and to, if the patient is allergic to penicillin, I would uh, convert the patient on on the patient will be on vancomycin, and then since the patient is allergic to iodine, I'll put the patient on chlorhexidine. Okay. Right. Uh, and your last patient only uh, is MRSA positive, but is also undergoing uh, atrial fibrillation and the, is insulin diabetic dependent. Yes, that uh, the patient will Why be- Why uh, do you think it's not an emergency? Why it should not be prioritized? Uh, this patient needs amputation from the question needs. It can be an elective, it's an elective case. Yes. So, uh, so it can be done, uh, even if it not, it's not done on that stated day, it can be done the next day. So that the patient, the, since the patient is MRC, it doesn't spread the infection. Okay. Uh, how would you consider if a patient is low risk, uh, low thromboembolic risk, or has a high thromboembolic risk? Uh, how do you determine? Uh, you know, those people that, uh, when the patient has a high yes. uh, and low, is uh, determined by, by the, by the hemo by the hemodynamic status. Okay. And? and then and then if the patient has a if the source of an emboli has actually led to a vascular problem that the patient is about to be operated upon, it's also a high, it's considered high risk. Okay. Right. Because uh, knowing the risk factor determines uh, how much uh, anticoagulant and which anticoagulant needs to be given and for how long. That's why it's okay. important. Very good. Okay, okay ma'am. Good. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.